Hi and welcome to another fly tying tutorial. Um, today we're going to tie the uh, pine squirrel kutlingen. Uh, it's a gobi pattern and, uh, and I tie this in size 10 and you can also tie this in size 8. But then I like to use a little bit more materials so the fly uh, looks a little bit uh, bigger. Yeah. And you can also tie this with a little bit of fluorescent red dubbing so you, it kind of imitates uh, a spawning gobi. So, uh, I'm using a Tiemco 777SP in a size 10. And here I'm just using a Unithread 60 in white. So, start off by uh, tying in your thread and align it with the barb. And I'm gonna snip out a small piece of pine squirrel sunker strip hairs. And I'm actually using uh, the sunker strips that the fire, uh, that the hairs are a little bit longer and I'm using the shorter ones for the, the for the dubbing loop. So snip out a small piece and try to tie them in uh, so they are in the full length of the hair. You want to use you want to make a nice long tail. So measure and, and make sure your thread is just by the barb. Take a couple of loose turns and pull it a little bit and tighten up and secure the tail. And I like to, to tighten up good. Yeah. And take your thread back again. Make sure your thread is aligned with the barb. And then you can advance your thread forwards. And I'm gonna tie in the bead chain eyes. Now I'm using a bead chain eyes medium in silver. And go back about one hook, uh, what can I say, three millimeters. And tying your bead chain eyes. It's very important that uh, they are placed at the same at, at this point because you're gonna have to have some room for the front of the fly. So do what you usually do and just some cross turns and yeah. And when you're happy with your bead chain eyes, you can advance your thread back again. And then we're gonna split the thread. And I'm using this from Mark Petitchon but you can use a sewing machine needle, it's very good. So split the thread by using your fingers and flattening the thread. And I'm gonna split the thread by using my nail. Here, I'm using my nail and flattening out the thread and I'm gonna split the thread with a needle. And we're gonna snip out a section of uh, uh, pine squirrel hairs. And I'm actually just using a paper clip and I'm using my little finger uh, and my ring finger and I'm using my index finger and my thumb to hold it with my left hand. And I just take a paper clip this is five centimeters long. And you just want to snip off close to the skin. And put it, put it in the splitted thread dubbing loop. And make sure the dubbing loop is all the way open. And then you want to try to pull them a little bit apart, the hairs, so they are not too compact, okay? Just a little bit, like that. And then you want to spin up your thread. And, and now I'm just pulling out some, some uh, tying thread and I'm just taking my index finger and my thumb and I'm sliding it down through uh, towards the 
pine squirrel hairs and the, the, the hairs will spin up. And then you want to make a dubbing loop over that again. Just like you normally would do. And advance your thread back to the barb. And then we're gonna make mix up our dubbing. Here I'm using some uh, rabbit, rabbit fur. And we're gonna mix it in with some ice tub holographic silver. And then dub a body. And here it's quite important to make a nice soft body because then the dubbing loop will kind of go in and be protected by the by the by the dubbing. I'll 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 you'll see later. So don't make it too hard. Nice and soft. And you want to make sure to stop just behind the eyes. Then we're gonna place in the whiting spray hackle. You just want to make sure the hackle fibers are pointing straight out from the hackle stem and that you leave uh, the hackle tip. I'm gonna put it straight in to the dubbing loop. Put it in and make sure the tip of the hackle extends behind the fly like that. And it's very important that the, the hackle stem is parallel with the dubbing loop. And pull it a little bit there, making sure it's nice and, and firm. Yeah, and you just can spin it up. Now you can see the tip of the hackle and you can like to brush it a little bit making sure every fiber is coming out and you can see the hackle tip and that will actually just fasten now. Now, now you can palmer the dubbing loop and you don't, you don't want to overdo it, you want to, to leave a 2 millimeter space between every turn. And make sure to pull all the fibers back as you go. Now you can see the dubbing loop kind of kind of soaks into the body or go deep into the body and the body will actually protect the hackle and the dubbing loop. So you don't need a rib. Now you could use the rest of the hackle to finish off the fly but I want to use some more pine squirrel so I'm going to finish off the hackle just behind the bead chain eyes. So I'm tying off the hackle behind the eyes, a couple of turns, and I'm taking the dubbing loop, like that, and I'm going to leave the hackle there, and I'm going to take the dubbing loop forwards, and I'm going to tie that in underneath the fly, like that. It looks a little bit chaotic, but uh, it works great. Because I don't want to crowd up the eye with the, with the hackle. So snip off the dubbing loop. And snip off your hackle. And there you go, that's a nice uh, goby pattern. It works great and a lot of movement. And you can just brush it a little bit. Like that. And you can pull off the tip of the hackle. And you got a nice solid fly. So advance your thread behind the eyes and you're gonna finish off the head. And for this I'm just gonna split the thread as we did uh, the first time by rubbing the thread and using your nail and split the thread.
Oh, there we go. Oh, one more try. There you go. And I'm gonna use my my clip, paper clip, and the same technique with my little finger and ring finger and my index finger and my thumb. And I'm gonna pull it a little bit so that it's nice and tight. Put on your clip and snip off the piece you want. Close to the skin. And I'm gonna put that into the dubbing loop. I'm gonna call it a dubbing loop because, you, I mean, you split the thread and I'm gonna call it a dubbing loop. Put it in and do the same here. Try to kind of pull the, the hairs a little bit from each other so it don't get too, 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 too thick. Yeah, you understand. And spin it up. Just pull some thread out and rub the uh, tying thread and it would actually spin up. And you can snip off some of the dark parts if you want. Spin it up. And then you have a nice tying thread with the most amazing pine squirrel hairs. It looks so good. And take a couple of turns in the back and cross over, and cross over, and you can go around the eyes, around, turn the fly, cross under and go around the eyes and back again, around the eyes and back again. And take a couple of turns in the front, take another turn in behind the eye and make a nice a nice head yeah and you can brush it a little bit pull out some of the hairs Then you use a whip finish tool and snip off the thread. And there we go, that's the pine squirrel kuttlingen, as we say. It's a nice goby fly. Just varnish the head. It's quite new this technique with the, the dubbing loop and, and the hackle, using the hackle directly in the dubbing loop. I, I haven't seen it before and, and please try it and, and tell me what you think. Just leave a comment. And I would like to thank Mark Petitchon for showing me the technique by splitting the thread. Thank you a lot Mark, I hope you, I see you soon again. And, and you other guys, thanks for watching uh, and I'll see you in uh, the next video. Have a great weekend, goodbye.